Okay, hi. Sorry, everyone. I kind of assumed it would do something different than what it actually did. Um, my name is Jennifer Hawkins. I'm the community director for the Secular Booze Association, and I randomly had the energy to do this today, so we're doing it. Um, forgive me for not staring right into the camera. It's, it's up high. Anyways, um, for those of you who aren't familiar, today in the U.S. is a special sort of day or holiday called Loving Day, and I'm going to force you guys to go ahead and Google it for more information, but the gist of it is that back during segregation, which was not that long ago, it was illegal for people of different races to get married, in particular European Americans with anyone African American, and um, there was maybe not the first couple ever, but one of the first couples um, it was a European American man and an African American woman, and they took it all the way to the Supreme Court suing for the right to get married. And they did get married, and they stayed married until the day that they died. Um, so Loving Day, the first level of it is that it's a celebration of the end of segregation at least some of the steps and how it ended. It's a celebration of interracial love. It's a celebration of African-American history. Um, but then kind of what I want to question a little bit before we go ahead with our meditation is whether or not um, there are other ways to also look at Loving Day. Um, now, the history of it is very important. It's important to not only African Americans and Americans in general, but it's important to me. In case it's not obvious, I'm part African American and part a whole bunch of other things, but that includes a lot of European American too. So Loving Day is kind of like, wow, in particular, my holiday. Hi, it's me. Um, but there are other people who might also find other meanings in that holiday as well. So I'm thinking in particular of the LGBTQIA plus community that they also have an ongoing struggle with their rights as far as being able to marry and do everything that a heteronormative couple can do. Um, so certainly the parallels are there. And much as I am happy and a product of Loving Day originally happening, I hope that someday in the future there's another person sitting here having the same sort of talk, talking about Loving Day and what it meant to African Americans and Americans in general, and then going on to talk about themselves a little bit and what similar sorts of actions meant for the LGBTQIA plus community in the U.S. and Canada and everywhere in the world today and how they're a product of basically progress towards equal rights and less suffering for everyone. Um, a couple other points before we get started. Around my neck, I put it on especially for you guys, is a mala necklace. It's a Tibetan style mala necklace. And I've had people ask me before, you know, what is a mala? What's a mala necklace? What's it for? What do you use it for? And sort of the general explanation is that um, it's a set of prayer beads um, common in many different schools of Buddhism, though I associate it most closely with Tibetan or Vajrayana Buddhism. And the, the practical function of it is that you sort of move your hands along each bead after you say each um, repetition or phrase in a chanted or rep repetitive meditation. And it's something that I usually use for this particular meditation, which is metta or loving kindness. And we won't be using it today because we're only going through it twice and we don't really need a counter, but just something I wanted to kind of let you people know about. Oh, there are people on the side. This is my first time ever doing any sort of guided meditation online in front of a live audience and certainly my first time with Facebook Live. So forgive me my awkwardness, um, but it looks like we have a chat on the side. Hi, people in the chat. I'm very glad that you and everyone could make time for this little impromptu thing that I'm doing to celebrate Loving Day. Like, we didn't have anything planned and I just woke up and was like, you know, it'd be great to do a meta or loving kindness meditation. So I'm not going to go into everything about um, meta meditation or loving kindness, but just sort of a brief summary is that it's a form of meditation where there are phrases um, and what the exact phrases are vary by school, by, by teacher, by situation. But you say the phrases and they're generally well wishes or good intentions or 
sending love towards different sets of people. So the first set might be towards yourself, then towards your family, your friends, um, neutral people, uh, strangers, uh, teachers, uh, co-workers, things of that nature. And then finally towards people you might consider enemies or opponents or just people that you have struggles with. Um, and there's a couple different layers of, I, I suppose, challenge or practice here. The first layer is that um, it's not just saying the words, it's focusing in and saying each word and actually meaning it as you're saying it. So the way we're doing it today, and I put a link to the version we're using down the doobly-doo to use some YouTube terminology, but basically underneath wherever you're seeing this link, there's a little picture it's a picture of the Buddhist Churches of America version of the, um, the meta recitation. Uh, anyways, you're supposed to say each word or mean each word as you say it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to very slowly say each word and pause after each line and just give ourselves just a brief little pause to actually mean what we say and to maybe allow a little bit of deeper thought into what we're actually saying and what it would mean if we actually mean it. Um, after we do that all together once, you know, we'll get all the hiccups out and we'll do it one more time. And then at the end, I originally planned this to be um, on Zoom, but that wasn't an option. There was like some technical stuff. So I don't think we have the capability to um, have like a large group discussion, like face to face in real time with each other, kind of like how I was planning. But we do have the chat and you guys are free to post, um, as long as it's not trolling, to post anything you want on the side. And if you have any questions, I'll try to answer those at the end. I'll say a little bit extra. And if you have any comments for me or for anyone, just sending love out to the universe, let me know and do that. Um, oh, and then a couple of other warnings before we start. Sorry to have this whole little intro thing. But um, most practices that people might consider difficult, people tend to visualize as a hill. They start off easy, then they get like, it's this uphill climb, and it gets difficult, and then it gets easier again. The thing with meta is that a common experience, I'm not saying it's going to be yours, I'm not saying it's mine, but a common experience is that it's more of a trough. So it starts off with... I have to send love to myself, and a lot of people struggle with this. And then it gets easier because you start talking about your relatives and your pets and your teachers and people you're neutral about, and, you know. Then it turns into more of an uphill climb as we start talking about, oh, in front of the camera, strangers and maybe people that we have difficulty with or even like enemies. Um, so I won't dedicate a lot of time to self-compassion today, but that is a very important part of this, that yes, you should love yourself. Um, when other people are saying this meta recitation, they're directing love at you at some point too. So if they can love you, you can love you. And then the other half of that is um, just a quick word on people that we have difficulties with or maybe even enemies. Sometimes people look at practices like meta and they go, oh, well, Buddhism or this individual teacher or whatever it is, oh, they just want me to just love, love, love and forgive, if, you know, forgive, forgive, forgive. Um, there's a certain amount of truth to that, but I just want to make this clear. If you are in a situation where someone's being abusive to you and they're harming you or maybe it's something so severe where they've broken a law, like they've stolen money from you or what have you, there is nothing wrong with rejecting a continued relationship with that person, rejecting that abuse, say no to it, walk away. Um, if it's a kind of situation where there needs to be legal ramifications or restitution, there's nothing wrong with that either. Um, if someone's stolen money from you, go to the court, ask for that money back. That's perfectly fine. What, what Katama Buddha and other teachers, generally speaking, at least for me, are trying to say is, yes, all of those things, but find a middle way. You don't need to, to want unnecessary harm at another person. So get restitution, get yourself out of a bad situation, but leave it there and don't, 
don't carry around the poison of hate in your heart. And it's not about doing good for this other person. It's about doing good for yourself. Because if you're carrying around hate all day, that's actually bad for you. So why suffer the first harm that this person did to you and then suffer further harm by carrying around all of this anger and hate in your heart when you don't have to? Anyways, with that, those are my last words. Let's get to the practice, folks. So I am just going to... I did plan on doing this at Zoom. Let's stack our windows side by side so I can see clearly, see you guys, and see my little copy of it. Um, Uh-oh, there you are. I had planned to do this where I could share the screen and you guys could look at it instead of my face, but I don't think I have that capability in Facebook Live. So again, I'm very sorry. But underneath the video, um, wherever you got the video from or wherever you're watching it from, you're going to see a copy of something called the Loving Kindness or Metta Meditation by Palo Alto Buddhist Temple, their version of it, um, or from the Buddhist Churches of America.org. Um, once again, it should be down in the comment sections of wherever you found the link to this. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to say it slowly. Um, I encourage people to say it out loud, sort of with me. I know that's awkward. And if you can't say it out loud, say it in your head, however you have to do it. We're going to say it. We're going to really think about it and concentrate on meaning each word as we say it. And then we're going to pause at the end of each line and keep going. We're going to do, we're going to read the whole uh, eight stanzas that they have here. We're going to take a brief pause and then we're going to do it one more time. And then we're going to make room to sort of talk in the chat at the end. So here we go. May all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May I be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to me. May I live in peace and harmony. May my family be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my teachers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my friends be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May strangers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my enemies be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. Once again from the beginning. May all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May I be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to me. May I live in peace and harmony. May my family be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my teachers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my friends be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May strangers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my enemies be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. 
May they live in peace and harmony. So I know that wasn't long or huge, and I know this was last minute. Um, but I guess I'll just give a couple of my reflections, having done that twice. Um, I'll just cheat and look over at my little screen here. You know, sometimes it helps when I get to that second stanza, may I be happy and well. I just kind of put my hand on my heart. Um, and it kind of helped me to connect with myself a little bit. And to think, you know, I'm also this person living in this body. May I be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to me or this body that does me the favor of carrying around this, this mind all day for me. May I live in peace and harmony. Um, the third stanza, family. There are some people that struggle with that. And to them I say, what would it be like if the people you're having difficulties with, what if they were actually happy? What if they were free from harm? And, you know, how do we define family? There are biological families and there are families of choice. Teachers, not a particularly difficult one. Friends, not a particularly difficult one. Not usually. Strangers also. You know, random people you see in the store, the person you talk to, the customer service representative on the phone. May they be happy and well. Like, what does it hurt to just wish them a little happiness? But then we get down to the seventh stanza, which is um, dedicated to enemies. And you know what? The people that have hurt you, what if they were actually happy and well? When you think of your enemies, do you think of them as happy? Do you think of them as well? Do you ever consider that maybe if if they lived a different life and weren't harmed and weren't going through difficulty, maybe they would react to you a little bit differently. Um, not that the burden's on you, but what if they did live in peace and harmony? And what if that included being in peace and harmony with you? Um, and then of course, may all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. That's that's just true. So I'm going to sit here for a few minutes in case anyone has any comments or anything or would like to talk. You just post it down there. If you feel comfortable, feel free to share your own thoughts on how your meditation went. And certainly <laughs> feel free to keep going and keep repeating. Um, after I leave today, feel free to keep reciting this over and over again it normally has sort of a cumulative effect and that's why it's often done with the mala do it 108 some odd times and you'll notice a certain change in your own emotional state anyways thank you thank you for coming thank you for listening thank you for being part of this and you know what thank you for honoring loving day um I know it doesn't mean a lot to some people, and it doesn't mean a lot to people outside the U.S. usually, but um, it means a lot to African Americans, and it means a lot to all Americans um, that segregation ended and the harm that it did not only to the people who were being victimized by it, but to the people who perpetrated it as well. It's not good for you to get into the mind state of wanting to separate and harm others and to deny them. That's harmful for the oppressor or the person committing the, the act of harm as well. Um, and I think that there's even lingering impacts of that still today in our country. So thank you. Thank you for joining this, for celebrating this holiday. Um, for for standing behind others who are going through similar struggles like the LGBTQIA plus community. And thank you for being willing to try this out with me because it's certainly my first time and for being patient and loving. And gosh, I'm just trying to think of everything I should say. But um, thank you for being willing to try this and for sending love out 
first of all to yourself because even if you're sitting there like oh i can't love myself like i love you i love you for coming thanks um but even for sending it out to people you don't know and for people you're having difficulties with so thank you um i'll end it in just a minute i just want to make sure that if anyone wants to post anything they don't get ignored um Thank you to Debbie, Stephanie, Brent, Dia, Alec, Orion, my own cousin, haha. Um, another product of Loving Day. And to anyone else who's here and maybe you haven't posted in chat, but I appreciate it. Thank you, J-Rod, or J-Rod, sorry. All right, well, I'm signing off for now, but may everyone who was part of this and helped inspire this, everyone, just everyone, all beings, May everyone here and all beings everywhere be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to you today or ever. May you live in peace and harmony.